Hello everybody. This is the first video in a series of videos on exploratory computing with Python. My name is Mark Bakker and I work at the Delft University of Technology. In this video, we're going to learn how to start a new notebook in Jupyter Lab. We'll learn the fir our first basic Python commands and we'll learn how to plot a function. I assumed you installed Anaconda on your machine, the Anaconda Python distribution. So on a Windows machine, go to Start, Anaconda 3, and click on the Anaconda Navigator icon. On a Mac, go to the Launchpad and click on the Anaconda Navigator icon. I put it on my desktop here, so I double-click on it to start. Anaconda is a Python distribution that includes basic Python and a whole bunch of packages to do all kinds of specific tasks, like plotting or doing specific calculations. We're going to use several of those packages uh, today. When you start up the navigator, this is the screen you get, um, and you can start different applications. We will start Jupyter Lab. So we click on Launch, and when you click on Launch, it will start Jupyter Lab in your default web browser. For me, that is in Safari. So I make it full screen, and this is the way we start up on the left side you see some kind of a directory structure which is the directory where Jupyter Lab has started and on the right side you get your first console um, which we're not going to use now so let's click it away this is probably what you get when you start up um, on the left side here this is a directory structure and you can click through the directories up and down if you want um, and select whatever notebook you want to see but what we will do today is we will start our own notebook so we start a notebook uh, by going to File, New, Notebook, and we start our first empty notebook by clicking on that. And it asks, what do you want to start? Do you want to start Python 3? And in fact, I don't have any other options, so let's do Python 3. Uh, if you have other things installed, you might have other options. And Jupyter Notebook starts like this. We now don't really need this left side anymore, so we can hide that so we have a little bit more screen to play with. So I do view, show left sidebar, I click on that again, so it's gone. If I want it back, I can get it back like that, or click on one of the icons on this side. The very first blue rectangle here at the top is called a code cell. That is where you can type Python commands. And the very first thing we can try is use Python as a calculator. We can type 2 times 3, and then I hit Shift Enter to execute this command, and the result is, not surprisingly, 6. Notice that I put some additional spaces around the uh, star, the time symbol, um, but I could have done 2 times 3. I again hit Shift Enter, still get 6. In Python, it is recommended to add those extra spaces around mathematical symbols to make the code easier readable, so I recommend you do that. Uh, of course, we don't just want to uh, use Python as a calculator. We want to store values in variables. So we go, go to the next code cell, and I can type here a is equal to 2, b is equal to 3, and then do a times b. I again now hit Shift Enter before I only hit Enter, so I go to the next line. I hit Shift Enter to execute this, and I get 6. What I can also do is I can store the value of a times b in a new variable. Let's call it c. I type c is a times b. Oh, and now we don't see the value of c. Uh, it's not printed to the screen because it's stored in the variable c. But if I would like to see it, I can print it to the screen. I can type print c. And we get 6. Print, open parentheses, c, close parentheses. In fact, I can make the statement a little bit nicer. I can say the value of c is and notice that i can put any text there as long as i put it between quotes and i'm using single quotes here to start and end the string uh, i could have used double quotes as long as you begin with the same one as you end then i do a comma and then i do a c i can also print to the screen the other variables i can for example in a different code cell say print a comma b so it prints and then hit shift enter prints the value of a, which is 2, and the value of b, which is 3 to the screen. And I could have even done that in a code cell above that. I could, after 2 times 3, I could have done print a, comma b, and it would still print 2 and 3 to the screen. So why is that? Right? So the order is now somewhat weird, but the order is indicated with the number. This is code cell 6 we executed, this is code cell 7, and this is now code cell 8. 
Of course, this is at the end not what you want, right? Because if you now would run these cells in order, starting with a fresh uh, Python kernel, then the very first cell cannot be executed because A and B are not known when you start over. So for example, if I do now kernel, I do restart kernel and run all cells, right? So that means that everything in Python memory is removed. So the A, B, and C, which are stored now are removed. We start fresh and we kind of do every cell um, consecutively. We do start cell, start, and then we get an error here. Print name A is not defined which makes sense because in this first code cell, we don't really know what A equals. So we have to be careful when you run these code cells, not in order, that at the end you have to do kernel, I'm gonna go back up here, kernel, restart and run all cells. That's always what you wanna do at the end of your notebook to make sure your notebook will run. So we now have that command and the third command right here. What we can also um, do is we can print a divided by B, hit shift enter, and then you get two thirds or 0.6666666. Um, and that's not so nice to get 16 sixes in a row. You might want to tell Python we want to have a um, fewer number. In fact, we want to probably determine, let's do two or three significant digits. Um, to do that, we use something called F printing. What we first type is an F, which means formatted printing. Then we do our quotes. And then we say some text print a divided by b equals then we go a colon and then we want to have the value of a divided by b and that value we put between braces and now the value of a divided by b is printed right there Ooh. and of course i need it nicely says here syntax error error end of line while scanning string literal so it says okay we have to print this string where's the end quote where's the end quote there is no end quote so you have to put this end quote in there one of one is enough and then it will run uh, so we could have even stored a divided by b in a different value variable let's call it d d is equal to a divided by b so we print here now the variable d which is a divided by b but it still prints all those uh, significant digits and I told you we don't have to do that with um, F printing so we have F printing we put this F here then we had between quotes and between braces we put the variables we want to show um, and then you can do a colon and you can type point and then the number of decimal places you want for example point two F fixed point will print 0.67 if you want to have four significant digits, we do 0 0.4, 0 0.6667. If you want to have exponential notation, we do point e, 0.4e. So it will run six point, it will do 6.667 times 10 to the power minus one. You can have multiple variables um, in an F print. You could, could say print the value of, of A is and then you print here a and a divided by b equals that so we have two values printed in that s statement and it nicely prints two and then um, a divided by two a divided by b so why for a it only prints two well a is a, an integer it's a whole number it doesn't have any decimal places so there's nothing for python to print next we want to plot a parabola but first we have to calculate a parabola for example, we can have a parabola, let's call the values y, y is equal to x minus 1 times x plus 1. That's a parabola, right? And we can do shift enter. Ooh, and we get an error message. Again, error messages um, are printed in this pink. And the best way to do it is to start reading your error message at the bottom. And here it says name x is not defined. Oh, well, that's right, because we never defined what x equals. So we can do x is equal to 3. And then we can compute y. We can print y to the screen, and we get one value. It's 8. right? And that's right. 3 minus 1 times 3 plus 1, that's 2 times 4, which is, equals to, which is equal to 8. But if we want to plot a parabola, we want to calculate y for a bunch of values of x. So how can we define a bunch of values for, of x? 
And to do that, we're going to have to use a package, and the package is called NumPy. NumPy, or numerical Python, um, is used pretty much in every notebook uh, of this series, and it has a bunch of functions to do uh, mathematical functions and a bunch of ways to create what's called an array. An array is a sequence or a, a, a bunch of numbers together in, uh, in an array that you can do calculations with. First, we have to import NumPy. And the way to do that is import NumPy. Um, NumPy is already installed because you have the Anaconda distribution installed. So you hit Shift Enter and now NumPy is installed and we can use any NumPy function. For example, we can do NumPy, it has the cosine function. We can type NumPy.cos and we can calculate the cosine of uh, one. And that would be one radian for, for your information. And we can get the, get the value. Now, it is not nice to have to type numpy dot for every function in numpy, um, but luckily Python allows you to rename uh, a, a package. And the default name that in the Python community is used is we use uh, numpy and we re rename it to np. So we, if we do import numpy as np, then we can type any function in numpy and type np dot. And in this case, we use the cosine function. Uh, but what I wanted is I wanted to have a sequence of values um, and for a sequence of values can be generated in several different ways. So we're going to use the linspace function, np.linspace. And what I do now is I open a parenthesis and now I want to know, okay, well, what is this linspace function? You've never even heard of it, right? I just mentioned it. What does it do if I now have my cursor between those parentheses and I hit shift tab, some pop help pops up. And it tells us here, all right, numpy np.linspace function, what you have to give it is a start value, a stop value, and, and, and then there seems to be some default values here. And the doc strings tells us it returns an evenly spaced numbers over a specified interval. So what it does, it does linear spacing from the start value to the stop value, including stop value. And the number of values it gives is defined by this num value. And by default, it does 50. But if I want to give it more, then I could do 100 or I could do 10, um, any, anything in between. Uh, or, or more eh? or, or fewer. So numpy lint space, I say, all right, I want to go from minus four to four and I want to have 10 values. Right? If I hit now shift enter, you get 10 values from minus four to four. Right? If I would have wanted uh, only five values, <coughs> I could have typed five here. If I wanted to make it even more explicit, I could have typed num is equal to five. So I remember, okay, that first value is the num, <coughs> it's the number of values that I want to get. Uh, let's do 100 values and store that in x. So x is equal to 100 values now. Uh, we can see that. If you, want, if you really want to see it, it's a lot of values. Uh, um, and I want to calculate for every x value, I want to calculate that parabola that we defined here. So I'm copying it from the top here. I write it in the code cell here. And I say, all right, y is equal to x minus 1 times x plus 1. <coughs> Excuse me, where uh, x varies from minus 4 to plus 4. There we go. Now we have 100 values of y. I can print y to the screen again. I could have print, print y there, but if the, the very last variable um, in the code cell, if, if you put that in the code cell uh, and you don't store it in anything, then it's automatically printed to the screen. All right, let's get rid of that Y again, not to clutter our screen. What, we wanted to, what we've done now is we've calculated the parabola for 100 values of X, stored it in the variable Y, and we now want to plot it. And to plot it, we're going to make use of yet another package, a second package, and the package is called matplotlib. We have to import that package, but the first thing we have to do is to tell the notebook where the uh, figure or the graph that we're going to create is going to go. And we want to have that figure in line. That means it's going to be in the notebook. And the command for that is percentage sign matplotlib inline. Any command that starts with the percentage sign shown here is what's called a magic function um, in IPython. It, it really is called a magic function. 
Uh, there's other magic function and we'll see some of those. But in this case, this is the command you give to get the figures to go um, in your notebook. And then we have to import the, uh, the package, uh, matplotlib, matplotlib. And in fact, we're going to do import matplotlib.pyplot. We're going to only import part of the matplotlib package called pyplot. And we're going to rename that because that's a very long name. And we're going to rename that as plt. And we'll do that in any notebook in this series. This is the standard name that people use for the plotting part of matplotlib. So we have now uh, shift enter, we import the package now, and we've told um, Jupyter Notebooks to put all the figures in the notebook, and we can now plot. And the plot statement is about as easy as you can think of. We, it's part of the PLT package, the matplotlib but py plot package. The function is called plot, and it's plot x comma y, and it plots x on the horizontal axis and y on the vertical axis. And there's your figure. There is your parabola. Uh, we can make this, of course, a bit nicer. Uh, we can add a label on along the x-axis. And for that, uh, the PLT package, the matplotlib package, has a function called xlabel. We open the parentheses again. Let's hit Shift-Tab, see what's going on. Shift-Tab, it wants an x-label. You can even specify some other things. For now, we're going to just give it an x-label, and it need needs to be a string. So it again has to be between either single quotes or double quotes. This is the X label. Not very innovative. Huh? And we can create a Y label and you can already guess what that should be. Y label goes here. And I have one space too many there. Shift enter. It will recreate the plot but now with all those statements included and it will put labels along the axis. The plot function has many, many capabilities. If you put your cursor back uh, at the plot function between the two parentheses, you hit shift tab, you get the help here. You can already see, you can plot X, Y, and then give a string, and the string tells it whether what color it is, or whether you want to plot markers or not. In fact, if you scroll down a little bit farther down, it hopefully tells us what colors we have. Where are the colors? Uh, they're not listed here. Oh, here we go. Here are the, uh, these are the uh, markers you can give. You can do points or circles or triangles. Um, you can tell the um, line to be a solid line or a dashed line or a dotted line. And you have some colors like blue and red or green. So if we want to make this line green, we put a G there and we get a green line. What we can also do is we can add a legend. And to do that, we first add a name, or really what's not called a name, but a label to, um, to our plotting statement. This um, a nice, uh, a green line, how about that? Space, a green line. So now the plot has a label. You don't see anything new yet. But if, um, if I now do plt.legend, um, matplotlib will do is will go through all the lines that are plotted and if a label is given it will add a legend for that so you see now here it nicely puts a legend a green line and it put the legend in this case in the lower left hand corner which it thinks is the best location you can have if you want to have it somewhere else you can define the location um, a keyword argument and say, okay, lo location is I want to have it uh, upper right hand. Um, oh, it's not called upper right hand, it's called upper right. And now it's in the upper right hand corner. Eh? Or you can just let Matplotlib figure it out and not specify that. This is uh, the first, this is the end of the first video. We've learned some basic Python commands. We learned how to do our first function. We learned how to do uh, get documentation or help on functions. Uh, we also saw our first error messages and we tried to deal with that. Um, in the next notebook, we're gonna learn more about arrays. Hope to see you next time.